Distraction is the enemy of discernment. You know, I was in prayer the other day and the Lord told me, actually, the day before yesterday, he said, Kurt, you are distracted by many things, which immediately took me to Luke chapter 10, where Jesus visited Martha's house. And Martha was the worry ward. She wanted to make sure everything was just perfect for Jesus, right? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is coming to your house. What do you want to do? Clean house, prepare dinner, do all the things to just make it perfect. But that was her biggest enemy because she looked at Mary who was worshiping at the feet of Jesus. But when Jesus looked at Martha, what did he say? He says, you are distracted by many things. I'm here. You're, you're, my presence is, is here. And all you can think about is the perfunctory. Why can't you let a few dishes go? Why do you have to have the best dinner uh, for me at the expense of, of my presence? You know, how many times do we just jump out of bed and let our flesh take the, the reins instead of the Holy Ghost? Why do we not take time every single day to acknowledge, God, I cannot without you. Oftentimes that's me. And oftentimes that is you, whether you're in ministry or not. The best thing you can, can do for your walk with Jesus, but also to be effective in this world is to lay hold of God, fellowship with him, let him love you, let him work things out in your life instead of trying to change environments and change people with your own ideas. People are gonna be turned off by that. Sometimes people will even use the Bible. They'll take their opinion, they'll take their thoughts, what they think is best for you. And listen, they're not God. You can't make man your God or man's opinion your God. And you know what I'm talking about. Deep down sometimes, you know, sometimes I just want people to go away <laughs> and, and leave us alone. Other times we just want everybody to, to be all right or certain people to be all right with what it is that, that we're doing. And, you know, we need to look at that. Why, why is that? The fear of man brings a snare, but those who trust in the Lord are safe and secure, truly, deep down. You're always gonna have disagreements with the people that you, that you love. You know, and there should be unity. The Bible says endeavor to keep the unity, make every effort to keep the unity in the bond of peace, but don't be distracted by friends of yours with unbiblical, um, viewpoints that are trying to force them uh, on you. Don't, don't be distracted by that. Don't be distracted by social media. A lot of us are these days in an election year uh, to where we can't even see things sometimes righteously, biblically, and lovingly. You know, I like what it says in Isaiah, what God says in Isaiah uh, chapter 26. He says, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is set on me, stayed on me, because he trusts in me. This is a scripture we can look at backwards as well as forwards. You now people always say, well, I've read the Bible backwards and forwards. We'll start with this verse. You know, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, right? So if you look at it backwards, because I trust in the Lord, my thoughts are stayed on him and I am at perfect peace. Isn't that something to consider and meditate upon? As you trust in the Lord, and because you trust in the Lord, you're gonna to wanna to keep your sights set on Him. You're gonna to wanna to keep your, your um, spiritual antenna open to, to Him, not the world, right? And not what the world says that you should have and think and be. So I wanna encourage you today, and please like, share, comment. Somebody's gonna need this. One of your friends, somebody that's just a Martha. You know, maybe it's not Martha, maybe it's Mario, you know, that needs to be a Marty or something like that. And I'm not talking about gender flipping, please. <laughs> but you know what I mean in, in their way, in their mindset. You know, some people just say, well, that's just who I am and that's my, my uh, disposition. Well, how many know that, that God can change anything right to his, his glory? So we wanna change as we look to God, you know, we look to him, we wanna be like, like him. You want to become more and more um, like his character and, and in his image. We're created in his image. And as born again Christians, we want to become more and more like Jesus. Right? And change is hard. You know, you cannot condemn yourself into, into change, into godly change. 
Devil loves that because you've already beat yourself. He doesn't even have to show up. You know, if you condemn yourself, he's the, the condemner. He's the accuser of the brethren, right? But just submit to God. There's nobody that you can submit to truly that's going to, to love you and give you the answers that you need in due season. There's nobody that can calm the storm, but there's also nobody that can calm the storm within you. You know, you got some control issues. You got some some um, relational issues related to that. Now's the time, guys. Now's the time to get on your face before the Lord. You know, don't wait till you get to the end of your rope, you know, and a relationship has been strained so long that it's on the verge of of breaking you up. You know, that's not God's way at all. Get before the Lord. And, you know, here's, here's another little <laughs> um, nugget for you. Let me put it that way. Here's another little nugget for you is don't ask why. You know, there's the, I don't know if it's a beer commercial, what, but why ask why? You know, it's, it, sin is so deceptive. You know, it has its roots so, so deep. And yes, there are things from our first families and from other relationships that have, have geared us and conditioned us to, to think and act in, in ungodly or, or un, unloving ways, you know. And God can identify that. The Holy Spirit can identify that. You can get delivered from that. But when it comes to sin and when it comes to um, just being busy all the time or being a busy body, you got to give that up. You know, that's not God's God's way. And it just makes you miserable. It makes the people around you, some of them, miserable. And it causes others to just want to not be around you, you know. And all of us have been guilty of that at some level and in some situations. So just have grace with others. Have grace with yourself, Lord, uh, because the Lord God... Um, is the author of grace and he gives grace as well as truth. Love you guys. Have a blessed day. And remember, don't be distracted. You've got a lot to do for the Lord and it's of him through him and to him are all things. Amen.